Yeah, you man. Said the AI has come so far that you actually have to tell YouTube that you're not using AI in a video. Like to alter someone's voice or voice or uh, like a video. It's another, it's a new thing in YouTube. Every time I have to upload, I have to select no. You think it would be a default option? What's up, Michael? How you doing tonight, man? So, go ahead, turn that off. Move me back out. Your truck. Actually, should I? Yeah, we'll take this one. We'll take the bigger capacity trailer over there to the feed and make sure make pig food. This thing would probably be a pain in the tuckiest to get over to this feed mixer. Have a good Michael, thank you, Anthony. I switch to uh, because we have just that little bit of corn left, and I know the PJs like to do, so I'll probably switch to like whatever here. Toy Bean Tony is doing. Oh, Jackknife! What Mason, how are you? Again, if I do finish corn, that puts PJs on the grapes. Not 
this guy supposed to be? No, he's almost full. Alright. Okay, maybe I'll finish off this area here and leave five and six for PJs. Tony's probably chugging along on the. on the soybeans. Anthony, how are you? Get, get, hello, Mason? Are you not hearing me, sir? You said hello three times. Like, I, you want me to constantly keep saying hello to you? Is that what that is? I, I don't know. Do your thing, little buddy. What's up, Jesse? How are you, man? Thank you for asking, sir. Glad to hear you're doing the same. Okay, hello. What are you doing, my guy? Don't so reverse on me. Oh, good, Justin. Thanks for asking, sir. pretty good do we have more maybe i should run over there and sh do we have more pig food oh we have plenty of pig food looks like oh no okay we're really low on corn but i can go grab another load of pig food
Yep. I need that pig food filler. There we go. Is there really that much? Oh yeah, there was. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize we had that much. This is probably going to be too much.
I'm taking the lives of the like, the more first person oh, what's up, DJ Ice? How are you, man? Yeah, sorry, I'm reading something, apparently. have to be royalty free so if it's not royalty free I can't, I can't use it unfortunately I wish I could Whoopsie. Really?
What is he blocked by an object again? Yeesh. Some pigs that should be full. Yeah, they're full. This music actually is off of uh, off the YouTube music. It's Netflix or whatever. It's actually pretty good music. I actually like it. A lot of the YouTube music could be a little bit cheesy. Even a freight car. What the hell, you do? Freaking Jeep.
I don't think this is my problem. Eh? Maybe that is it. I don't know, man. Who's my Chevy? Let's see. One day smart. AC click. What's up, Steve? How you doing, man? What's up, Lego? Lego, how are you, man? Making chocolate chip cookies? That's amazing. Howdy. Howdy. Figure that out. Okay, that's good to hear, Logo Lover. I'm doing pretty good myself. I can't complain. Can't complain at all. One bit. A little bit. Not even just a little teeny tiny bit. Sorry, I was trying to figure out. Dude. We've had this issue whenever I turn my AC on in my car um, for like the first like 15 seconds. It's just this ungodly loud clicking noise. It's been like that for a few years, but it doesn't affect the air conditioning at all. It's only when you when you turn on the air, like when you start the car and the air is on, it does it. And it's only when you have it blowing out of the upper vents. If you blow, if you have it through like the floor vents, or if you have like the, the uh, defrost on, doesn't do it. It's only when um, 
you have the cool air on through the upper vents. So I was trying to figure out what it was because I'm going to be swamping out the head unit in my car soon. And it appears to be a door blend actuator. Um, <gasps> correct to anybody? Finally all set up here. Noise. Yep. Back to harvesting. Yeah, now I figure out <laughs> the sound. I'm, I'm good to harvest too. Mm. The sound. Yeah, my wife's bugging me because every time you turn the AC on in the car, it's been this way for years. It's like the first 15 seconds, you hear this god awfully loud clicking sound. Oh, and I was trying to figure out what it, what it is. I mean, it doesn't affect the AC at all. It just whenever right. you turn the turn the car on and the AC's on, or if you flip the AC on through the vent, the upper vent. If you do it through the floor vent, it doesn't do it. It's just the upper vent. Huh. You get this god awful like clicking, that, and uh, she's it's, it's driving her nuts. So she and found a uh, yeah, and then it stops. Like it's only for first fifteen seconds. From what I'm reading, it could be a door blend actuator. What the hell is that? Uh, it's apparently it's a, the door that the, like you, the switches out for what depending on what if you want heat or air conditioning or something. I don't know. Oh. But I got I snagged a uh, a uh, a new head unit for my car for free. So I'm gonna be swamping that out. So oh, I figured sweet. might as well swamp that while I'm well, in there because they're on the either side of the radio. So right. if I have to go into the dash, might as well just take you know, take care of it all at the same time. I just had to make sure that's what it was before I pulled the trigger. Yeah. But yeah, I'm always part of that Amazon Vine. I was just I was just looking around this morning, and I was like, all right, let me just type in Sonata. And it's a freaking uh, like the navigation back up camera everything it's like over two hundred dollars i got for nothing damn that's what i'm saying there's nothing like a good head unit yeah because right now all i have is a cd player with the the little the little little tiny screen screen on it and Mm -hmm. it's been fine i mean it does what i need i'm not complaining i don't but I'm like, as, as I we go further away, I'm like, kind of wish I had like the GPS built into the dash because that's really really nice. Yeah, so I don't have that. that. That's so annoying. So, and then it comes with the backup camera, which I've been spoiled when we rent cars. I use the backup camera quite a bit, so <laughs> it would be <laughs> nice to have one in my car. Yeah. There are certain things, like, with my wife's new car, that's, I was like, oh, shit, like, that is, uh, it's pretty nice. And it's like, all that stuff is just kind of, like, standard now. And it's really just the past few years Mm -hmm. where it's all become completely standard. Like, I, I missed the Apple CarPlay by one year, and, 
like that's gonna haunt me for the rest of the time that I own that truck because like I can't do anything about it without subbing out the whole thing. But with that year of Tacoma, a lot of settings are done in the head unit and it doesn't like if I were to get an aftermarket one, you wouldn't be able to adjust those settings anymore. And they refused to sell me. I like even offer, I was like, I'll pay whatever you want <laughs> to like give me one from a, a newer Tacoma, like the 20, even like a 2020. And they're like, nope, we don't do that. Like, okay. But man, money, like, Apple... cause I can buy the, the limited, the, I have the, I have the SE edition, which is supposed to be like the standard edition, but I have the two point liter or the two liter turbo, which is like an upgrade from the standard edition. So it's got like mm -hmm. all the limited options, but it doesn't have the screen and didn't have the mirror blinkers, all of that. So I was looking into it and it's like, you can buy a, the uh, the limited head unit like the upgraded trim model which is limited you can buy that and put it in in your car no problem and i was like oh i can pull the trigger and i was like and they're like relatively cheap on ebay and i was like eh, but then you have to pay for update updating the maps and all that jazz I was like i would rather have something that has like google maps or something on it and that's what this has has uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Mm hmm Yeah, man, that's what I want so badly. It's like, can I, is there any way that I can get that? Because if, if I can get that, then I just like, it's like, yeah, I wanted to have a manual, but like, I, I think if I had the Apple CarPlay, I would keep this truck until it runs into the ground, which is probably like 15 years from now. But like, if not, like I'm sick of like putting on my phone and then using, I have to use the cup holder to put my phone in it so I can get the directions for where I'm going. And it's like, That's I have a screen. Yeah. And it's like, I have a screen that is big enough for this thing. Like it can't be that hard. It has to be like a micro chip or something like that with the autoplay functionality that you can probably just put in there because it's the same head unit. Like, it it just doesn't have that. No, oh, it's so annoying. Uh, let's see. And I also said before I, to myself, before I joined in here, I, I wonder how long it's going to take me before I switch over to, like, looking at, on the internet for something. <laughs> like 15 minutes good i mean that's that's 10 minutes of restraint right there that's pretty good yeah uh, but so also some of the stuff for my wife's car is like it is like way too way too much and it's like why are you doing that like everything is touch so there's no like dials or and yeah, that weird on yeah. so in order if you want to adjust like the heat because it's like you can have your driver's side climate control and your passenger side climate control and it's not a dial anymore and it's not like a lever like like side to side lever thing it's like you run your finger across and then it'll like tell you what the temperature is based on which direction you like swipe your finger across and it's like, why? They I, make, and it's like, no wonder there are so many freaking accidents now. Because in order to do all, and then you can like customize the airflow. Like you can do presets for climate control. And like you can pick which vents are working, which ones aren't. And it's not just like the simple, like you turn the dial. It's like you go to this screen that is a replica of the interior of your vehicle with the highlighted vents and the airflow showing and you can like pick what strength each vent is blowing air and make it a preset and then you can all, like all of it is like on and on and on and on it's like why 
and it's like sometimes there are just certain things where just because you can do it doesn't mean you have to do it. That's my main problem with like uh, the the newer updated cars where like everything's controlled by a touchscreen. It's like, what if that touchscreen fails? Then you like you literally oh, yeah, SOL yeah, yeah, yeah. for everything. Well, that's why it's like it's going to be so much more expensive to do all of the like repairs and maintenance on these vehicles going forward. It's because everything's electronic. Like it's not just like oh yeah you need this part. It's like well it's a little bit more complicated than that, sir. See, they don't have any. Although. That would be pretty sick. And she's got, oh yeah, she's got like the, the wireless charging. Ah. Oh. Too. And it's like, had I just, if I knew now, what I knew that, or what I didn't know then, or what I knew then, uh, I would have just sacked up and bought like the next level of Tacoma. I like, I would have spent the extra couple thousand, knowing that like the resell value on it right now is astronomical. Almost almost what I bought it for. Yeah. Like, I would have just done it because, like, that had wireless well, charging. Like, good and, noise, my like, I don't know if it had Apple CarPlay. I know it was an option back then. I don't know what trim it, it was going to come at. But anyways, like, I just would have done that. So this is, like, they do have head units. And it, I mean, it just says that they're compatible. It's not like the actual... thing and then it's like I don't want to change it too much ah oh, that'd be dope though yeah I think I'd probably have to look to see like what settings I would need to or I would sacrifice and obviously keep the old head unit. Oh, that's sick. I didn't read that. This thing actually comes with thing actually comes with a GPS antenna, so it's got built-in maps, like, so you don't even have to use it. Oh, don't use those, man. Those are the worst. Are they? Yeah, because it's, like, all the updates that you have to do, and like, it doesn't take into consideration, like, well, at least, uh, so the Tacoma has its own thing. It's, like, Scout GPS. So like I can technically it does have a GPS yeah. system in it. But it's so it's an app on the phone that then connects like via Bluetooth to the screen. Uh, but it doesn't it's not like Waze and it's not like Google Maps or um, like the Apple maps where it doesn't really take into consideration like traffic and stuff. So like remember the old GPSs? Like Back in the day, yeah, like the Garmin or something like that. Like it didn't take into consideration traffic or anything like that. So it may be different now, but at least for the one that I have for my truck, it absolutely sucks. And I, I've used it twice, and I was like, nope, never again. So I'd say it's not worth it. 
Yeah, well, see, my main problem... Because then you got to install an antenna, and then you're going to have a wire on the outside of your car. But my problem with uh, Google Maps is it's constantly trying to reroute you, and every time I've, mm -hmm. I've rerouted it, it's always been longer than Worst. if I yep. just st stay on the path. So, like, the the two times we went down to Tennessee, both times we got rerouted. The first or second time, I can't remember. It took us right downtown Washington, D.C. Yep. Like, I passed the Washington Monument. And yeah. we were in the we were in the downtown DC for like a good hour just trying to get the frick around this accident, which added like ten minutes to our time. So yeah. like when I, we were I going call it stupid maps. Yeah, like when, when we were going up to Philadelphia, it comes like there's a traffic accident that's adding seven minutes. I was like, I tell my wife, Good. hit no, hit no, keep us on this yeah. route. Yep, that's what I do. I call it stupid maps, and then. Like, it's good for, like, satellite and, like, looking up locations if you want to see what it looks like. Like, perfect. For driving, no. Apple Maps or whatever it is, the Maps equivalent for Apple is by far the best. Well, see, I've never used Apple Maps because everyone I've heard use it complained about it. I like it. I like it better. Anytime my wife uses the Google Maps for directions, it takes us, like, the most like ass backwards way to get there so I'm like nope nope I've never used Waze though I wanted was it Waze that had has like the custom audio packs or you could do like, yeah yeah I want to do that just have Dale Arnold Jr. Tell me and I think like Waze somehow integrates into yeah. Apple Maps yep. or something like that Apple, because uh Android Auto. It's an app you I can think use it's, an Android Auto. Because sometimes I'm driving and they're like, oh, um, like speed check reported ahead. And I'm like, why? Well, I'm just using the straight up like Apple Maps thing. And if I see like a speed check or something, like I can't uh, mark it. So there has to be, and I know with Waze you can. So I was like thinking like there's got to be an in some kind of integration in there. If it's anything like uh, uh, Android Auto, Android like I said, you can use Waze as an, an app in Android Auto. So it recognizes it. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's probably the same at this point. Pretty sure. Because I, I, I was going to install it back when I had, was using Android. Still, I was going to install it uh, for. I can't remember who there was a voice pack I wanted to use and it was no longer available. Might have been Terry Crews. Oh. I was like really pissed off. I was like, I wanted Terry Crews to be like, turn right here. <laughs> yeah, like Mike Tyson would be funny. Hey, pull him right, right here. Your destination's gonna be on the right. <laughs> <laughs> I've, ever since you said something about his training videos, I've been getting them on, yeah. on my oh, TikTok feed. Works. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. It's insane. You still want to fuck with me? <laughs> yep. Yep, it's like... Like, no, uh, no, I don't. Absolutely not. Nope. And it's like, you, you bit a guy's ear off. Mm -mm. Did you see the one where he knocked the, the pad off the... His, the guy his trainer yeah, yeah his head and the trainer kind of looked like he was about to shit himself <laughs> yeah he's like oh no he's, I hope Mike, he Mike, stops Mike. <laughs> yeah yep that, that's someone I would not fight like even at his, his age no yeah no hell no I like life yep I do want to see that fight, though. Yeah, I'll probably watch it. 
I mean, it's on Netflix, so like, yeah, it might free. as well. Yep. Oh, it's free if you pay for Netflix. Right, yeah. I guess it's kind of a preview of what's going to be like next year when you're able to watch WWE Raw live on Netflix. Oh, really? Yep, January 2024, I believe. Uh, they're, uh, they've already well, agreed to a deal. It's going to be airing live on Netflix. Well, I mean, like, Netflix is behind the game in terms of, like, live events. Yeah. Pretty sure most other... Well... Actually, yeah, all the other streaming services you can, so you can watch live. So, Raw is going to be going here at the beginning of 2024. When the Peacock deal is up, they get all the pay-per-views. When um, the NXT deal is up, they get NXT. And Smack or SmackDown, I think, is the last one to expire because I think they just signed a five-year deal mm. before the Netflix deal. So when that deal is up in five years, SmackDown. So everything WWE is going to be over on Netflix. That's for live. That's not going to be like weekly. No, it's going to be live. They, they're all going to be airing live. Wow. Because a lot of people are upset. Netflix it's like, going you know, hard into wrestling. I mean, mm -hmm. who would have thought? It's like a, it was a massive deal. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would imagine. It, and it's like, you know, it's like the same thing for NASCAR because people like outside of like the ones that watch it are just like who like who the hell watches nascar and like why is it so popular and it's like well if you're in the nascar community like there's a huge following and i guess the same would be for wrestling too because i look at that i'm just like listen wrestling was cool like i don't know like 20 years ago for me I stopped watching, but like, obviously, a lot of people watch it if Netflix is picking up on it, you know. Five billion dollars. Damn. For a ten-year deal, and they can opt out after five. I, mean, I guess that makes sense. To extend an additional ten years, or opt out after five. Because NASCAR did the same thing for next year because n next year's schedule is like, oh my God. Because right now it's like the first half of the year is on Fox and then, or like the Fox equivalent channels. And then it switches over yeah, to NBC. With ads at like seven like bucks a month. After the All-Star no race or like sometime in July. And they carry it through the rest of the year. This is the last year for that. Next year it's going over to like they're, they're only doing like one race at a time depending on and there's like going through all the different streaming platforms so there's going to be ones on Amazon Prime or like Prime Video there's going to be um, I think there's going to be one on Hulu I think there's going to be one on See, that shit would like all the streaming platforms yeah well that's well also I mean as you know like a lot of the population that enjoys nascar is like nowadays old yeah, traditional like yeah and let's see when you're so putting it all on. the people when nascar announced that the comment section was riddled with like how is my dad supposed to be able to watch this because like he isn't gonna be able to figure out how to like stream it yeah and then you have to have each of those streaming platforms just to yep. watch like the yep. week Oh, it's their, so, it's their latest and greatest money grab. It's awful. No, it's like, it doesn't bother me because, like, we waste money left and right on, like, having some form of every streaming platform, whether it be, like, sharing passwords for, from, like, through family. Ooh, you know how to do that. I know. <laughs> like, seriously, that's how I get... Like, that's how I have Netflix. That's how I have Max. I pay for Hulu. Yeah. 
Which really, like, I shouldn't. Like, there's no need for it. But. Um. I don't know. And then, like, technically, I think I still pay for Discovery Plus because there's, like, some show on it that didn't carry over to Max that my mom watches. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, see, I have Max and Netflix right now. That's all I'm paying for. And then uh, apparently I still get Peacock. Yeah, so. I, I get Peacock through my internet for the next year and a half, I think. Yeah, Which so mine was, will supposed to, survive mine was supposed the, to go uh, away. But, well, it, it didn't. If you have gigabyte internet, they extended it for two years. Oh, I don't know. I think it's included in my package that I got. Uh, I just know ours was supposed to go away in April, I think, of last year. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't know. But Anytime they, I go and watch like the Premier League... Because they do like their morning matches on USA, and then like, oh, it switches over to Peacock for like the twelve or one o'clock games. And I'm like, uh, okay, so then I just I go to Peacock, and like, sure enough, it's there, and I can watch it. So, like, and I don't pay any extra, so I'm like, okay, no problems here, as long as I'm still getting it, and I can watch Arsenal. I'm fine. Yeah, that's what I. Uh... They were supposed to end it, and then they announced. Cause I was pissed off. I was like, ah, I, I, yeah, I watch too. all the WWE pay per views. This, this sucks. And then we were watching uh, On Pro Live. And I was like, this sucks. This is like balls. And I was looking to see how much to keep it. And then, like, a month or so beforehand, they're like, as a thank you for being a Gigabyte customer, we're extending the Peacock for free for two yeah. years or something. And I was like, oh, yeah. sweet. The and then Netflix announced Peacock. that they're they're getting the pay per views when the Peacock deals yeah. up. So I'm like, oh, perfect timing. The problem with Peacock is like you can't for the live stuff like on Troll Live, like you can't record it. Yeah. And it doesn't show up like if you wanted to go back and watch on Troll Live, like yeah, it does. Goes oh, you can rewatch. Yeah, because that's how we were oh. doing it. We were just, we'd go back and rewatch it. Instead of, uh, instead of watching it live, because I'm always live streaming, you can go yeah. in and go to On Patrol Live and it'll say past episodes. And usually, like, a day or two after they air live, they're available for playback. Oh, okay. Oh, then that's perfect for me, because I don't mm -hmm. watch them until, like, the Tuesday after. Yeah, so, oh. like, we were watching, like, Sunday night, Friday nights would be available. At the oh, latest, cool. it would be Sunday night, and then. Right. Well, another reason to get rid of cable. Yeah. Because I I keep a, a bank of like forty episodes, and because I I think I have like PTSD of them pulling the cord on um, live PD so yeah. quickly, where like I only had like I was only keeping like six episodes at a time, and then when they pulled the plug, like it went away from every everywhere you could possibly find to watch old episodes and i was like never again <laughs> never shall i suffer without my police activity yeah but yeah no you can go in there it has all three seasons or if That's they're sick i don't mean, if they're on the next season you're I think not. they're still on two no they're definitely on three aren't they oh i don't know maybe, I don't know. maybe they are on two maybe i'm thinking something else but yeah, because no, it has August, them all listed. So I think they do it every August as a new season, and they'll have it. So if you if you go back to later episodes, it'll tell you like the main highlights on what mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. in the description. But if they just upload it, it will just say join it'll Dan Sticks and yeah, 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 whatever. Same thing on cable. That's 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 nice. That's nice. Bring that peacock. I wouldn't keep it just for li or on patrol live. I, oh, the main I reason I wanted work. to keep it was because you get every single WWE pay per view for free, and I was like, that's yeah. hard to pass up because they're like sixty bucks a pop. So you pay yeah. what sixty bucks for the year, and you, you, that's the price of one pay per view. You get to watch them all. That's twelve. See, I was more upset 
with potentially losing it because at the time it was the only streaming platform that had Harry Potter on it. Uh, but now Max has the Max shit. has Harry Potter too. So Max owns that shit. Yup. I don't even know what we were. Oh, Supernatural, which I don't understand why that's not on Max because that's a Warner Brothers property. My kid wanted to watch Supernatural. So we got that, we got Netflix back so she could watch it. And that's hmm. what we've been pretty much watching Netflix. I've discovered Resident Alien on there and I'm, I'm hooked. Well, I'm but sure it's because it's like an individual Peacock. movie deal versus like the studio that produces it. I don't know. Or no, if just think... like they have exclusive rights to it for X amount of time and then it will go over. That could be it too. But yeah, Warner Brothers. Uh, Warner Brothers owns the CW network, right? Not, yeah, because they yeah, they nixed Warner like Brothers. all the yeah. uh, all the script shows on CW. Yeah. Oh man! All right, I'll be right back. I gotta poop. <laughs> Thanks for that for me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've been watching most of it since we owned and fall asleep by the second match. Oh, what? Pay per views? I just can't wait for it. Like, I, I currently have no way to watch live wrestling. So the fact that I'll be able to re at least watch Raw live, and like, like I said, when um, when the other deal's up, they got first dibs on getting them. So by the end of, I think they said like 2030, all of WWE's content will be on Netflix, and I'm gonna be like <sighs> wrestling overload. We watch so much wrestling. And then if AEW comes to Max, oh my god! I'll be a happy boy. I'm so happy. I've woken up usually before the main event. For the pay-per-views? Dude, you can't miss a minute of the pay-per-views. You never know who's going to come back when. Usually they say the big ones for the end, you know, like CM Punk and all that. But, no, you got to... You got to pay attention to pay-per-views. I guess I'm running double double duty, <laughs> double duty crane car. What PJ do is the duty. It's a nice day, wood whacker. It's a nice day to jizz again. Stop his combine or the combine pool? Oh, he was in it. Oh. Yes, it happens. Just so. Uh, I just watched this next one and sometimes I'm mound up and watch all the pro show. I, I can't get into pre Now, if, if we have like meltdowns like we did uh, from CM Punk. 
now I, I watched press. I watched the shit out of those press conferences. Oh, I watched that one, and that was ooh. Got a bunch of VVPs that can't even manage a target, let alone a wrestling show. <laughs> oh. And I have Mercedes Money. Oh no, we missed that we missed the combine. Mm. Must catch it. Okay. See, look at Tony just uh, chugging along. I do think. Uh, what's that look like? Maybe we can go over there and survey that. And not what I mean to do, this is what I want. thinking okay good Tony did cut down the tree so we don't really need this grass field so I was thinking about just plowing this out make extend this out here separate these two because this field is pretty good size and then we'll have like a smaller field here or something. There was once a day that I would pray for you. Makes sense to me. And then keep this driveway here.
Dump it to crump it. Wait, can we make... Sorry. We can make silage out of straw. Ooh, maybe we just go load that up with straw. <laughs> we need mineral feed too. Auger animation is pretty dope. The fact that they included that. Lighter. Mm hmm. That really came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, crap. That works too. I mean, we just have all this straw pretty much sitting around doing nothing too, so. I'll never shop at Best Buy again. Oh no. What'd they do to you? Well, I went in there because my wife has been wanting a gaming laptop. She wants right. something that she can, like, like now when I'm live streaming, she can just go sit upstairs and play her games instead of sitting right next to me. Fair enough. So. Yeah, you know, I've been looking around, looking, looking, looking. So I, she had her MRI, and I was like, I'll go in Best Buy and see what they have. Mm -hmm. And I saw, actually, which was a pretty good deal, which blew the my mind that I found that at Best Buy. And uh, so I went up to her, I asked her. Well, I, first I stood in line, you know, like someone should, and because uh, the guy was helping someone else. Well, this woman come out of the back, uh, uh, how do I put this politely? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she completely blew me off and went right to the uh, couple of the same race as her. And uh. Uh, even the woman from that couple, she was like, have you been helped? And like, just 
from her just like walking right past me who's standing in line and going to them who's off to the side looking at stuff it, that told me all I need to know I was like ah, I'll wait for the other guy you know that's helping so I was like so I told him I was like hey if you figured out what you want go for it you know, I'm I, I'm not like in a rush so I'll wait for the right. one. it's not a racist piece of shit so I uh I sit there and wait, and the guy had to go up front when he got done helping the person he was helping. So I was stuck with this person. So I asked her if she had one, the the uh, certain one in stock. Well, I knew they had it in stock because I looked at it on on the website, and it said they had they had two left. But then again, I worked at Walmart. I know how that works. Inventory yeah. don't, don't always <laughs> yeah. line up. Yep. So, I was gonna say. so I was like, do you have the the Nitro 5 in stock? And she goes, MSI. Well, silly me, I didn't confirm which brand it was. It was Acer, not MSI. But I was like, yeah, sure. Because it was right next to the MSI brand. So I thought it was, uh. it was also an MSI laptop. So instead of, you know, walking over like the other guy was doing and helping people, she just sits there and types it in. Nope, don't have any MSIs in stock. It's like, alright. And I, I went and left and I was like, it, it really bugged the shit out of me because it said that I could pick it up within an hour on the website. So I went out, looked at, at the website some more on my phone and I was like, this, oh, it's Ace. Right let, me, let me go ask her if they have it, uh, have the Acer. So I went and stood in line again and she was helping an elderly gentleman. She goes, she over the radio is like, I need assistance over in the computers. You know, we have a couple people waiting for service. I, again, standing in line, she directs him to go over to an elderly couple who's standing over to the side, just looking through things instead of helping me who's standing in line again. So it's like this piece of shit. So finally, she finishes helping him, and I, I get up and I was like, oh, so it's not the MSI, it's the Acer Nitro 5. Oh, Acer, let me let me look that up. So she looks up again, I do have that one. She goes, so give me a minute, and let me get, get the ladder, and I'll get it down for you. I was like, all right. So I watched her. She walked over to the ladder and stood there for a couple minutes. Meanwhile, the other, the other gentleman has pulled a ladder from somewhere else and he went up to where the laptops are stored pulls out a laptop and sits it down on the side and it says nitro 5 and i was like okay this is i know where this is going i 100 percent know where this is going and she walks over to him and is like who's that for and he says the elderly couple over there you gotta, you gotta be fucking shit. If she tells Come me, she, if she tells me that they don't, that's the last what, one. I'm gonna be like so, an OnlyFans or something. I'm gonna be so fucking. Yeah, why? They weren't even looking at the gaming laptops. They were looking at laptops like the, the laptop. That dude probably the recommended it because it was on sale. Yeah. So he gets out. He starts ringing them up. She climbs the ladder. Stands. She doesn't open. Like she doesn't even like look through the laptop. She just stands there for like a minute. And then she comes back down and goes, yeah, they got the last one. I was like, all right, whatever. And I just walked out. I told my wife, I was like, this is, this is, I will never shop at Best Buy again after that. Because it, so, it pissed me off more because I can't order anything offline without my wife knowing it's coming. Because she has all the apps, the, the tracks, because she gets shit well, through all the time through her Yeah, you may need to knock stuff. her off a little bit. So, like, there's no way I can order online and have it shipped because as soon as it, the shipping thing shows up, it, she gets it in her app to know it's coming. So she's like, what's this coming from Amazon or Best Buy or whatever? It's like, don't worry about it. So then she knows something's coming for me before. So this was, a, like, a prime opportunity I could pick it up, put it in the trunk, surprise her with it. Yeah. And they I mean, fucking ruined it, it. It's pretty obvious now that like in-person retail is just it's not what it used to be like it disappeared completely and then they had to like bring it back and it like what it is now is just not 
Good. So like, I let's put it this way: like, I could have gone to. I needed like hair gel, and I could have gone down the street to like Walgreens or CVS, and taken my chances because inventory on that stuff is just kind of. 50 50 i know that they i've bought it there before but i've also been there to get it and it hasn't been there and it's just like you know what nope i'm just gonna buy this on amazon and that's what i did i, I pretty much just buy everything online now that's even from retailers what i do but i, I like, refuse to do the grocery stuff online i, I have to go in and like like, I'm not going to trust someone else to pick out my meat. Sorry. Oh, we've done that a couple times, and every single time it's been a huge, huge disappointment. And, like, nope. Because one time we both had COVID, and we, like, did um, our local grocery store chain has, like, a delivery service. So you order everything online, and then they'll just, like, deliver it within a window of time and you just give them the delivery instructions so we're just like we'll open the garage door and just put it in the garage and like they will let you know if there's substitutions that need to be made but they don't really tell you what you're they're substituting it with but also it's like at the time, we were both eating lunch, just like regular lunch meat, and it was like it was like you're getting the shavings, like the leftovers. <laughs> Seriously, like of everything. It was like what no one else bought at the store that day. They brought to a distribution facility and then used the rest of it to do their online ordering stuff ab just horrible and then another time we did the one where you could just order it online and this is a different grocery store and then pick it up at a specific time like contactless thing like you just open your trunk and they'll put it in there for you the woman. and i i waited for uh, like I let them know I was there I waited for like an hour and they were like oh yeah 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 we're just really busy so like hang on and it's like well like my order's supposed to be ready because I'm picking up they didn't even go out and do the shopping in the grocery store at the time that I had shown up like it wasn't even started yet so we literally just told this lady after a while, just like questioning her, just like, why? What's going on? And she's coming up with excuses, basically just sort of F herself. Like, we're just going to go in and do the grocery shopping ourselves. And we made it a race because we didn't cancel the order. <laughs> Who could fill it first? Yep. Yep, and then we did, and then canceled the order after. <laughs> That's a, I've, I've Which is kind of a, them. a dick move because, like, whoever was actually out there at that point, like, shopping for stuff, did all of that for nothing. But <laughs> also at the same point in time, <laughs> like, should be working for shits. You. Know? Yeah, it's like I passed him in the in the aisle, gave him a dirty look. So we're here, uh, like, pajamas. Oh, yep. you're in for it. Yep. I am pajamas. Can you imagine that, though, when they're, you're filling an order and someone walks by you and you see the exact same shit in their cart and you're like, wait a minute, I'm about to get fucked here. <laughs> the people that, aren't, that are working there aren't that, like... Oh, trust me, I know. I'm Cognitively aware to put two and two together and be like, I bet that's the same person that ordered this. Trust like, me, I know. I've, I've watched them walk around Walmart too many times, and they'll sit there and they'll, because they'll scan it with their little their little phone yeah, handheld thing, yep. and they're like, it should be here, and they'll look around for a couple minutes, and they're like, well, 
we have to substitute that. And yeah. I'm sitting there looking, and it's like, it's right there. It's it's literally two spots away from where it's supposed to be. Yeah, but also at the same time, like, listen, I go to the grocery store once a week, right? And, like, uh, aside from some, like, very specific things, like, I know where everything is. Yeah. Right? Like, based on brands, based yep. on, uh, like, food type and everything like that. Like, I know the aisles pretty well. Unless it's something that's weird, like beef bouillon cubes or, like, I don't know, like... Uh, uh, frozen dumplings. Those, those yeah. get moved around oh, all no. the fucking time. They're either on the end cap, they're like either by, sp- like, the pasta, or they're in no, the bread it, section. Like, a weird spice. Like, we needed... Uh, my wife wanted, needed um, sumac. Powdered What's sumac. What's to get sued? Yeah, right? Powdered sumac. And I'm just like, <laughs> are you going to get poison sumac from that? But anyways, like, aside from those very specific things, like, me, as a visitor, once weekly, knows where everything is. These people that work at the grocery store, like, and do this stuff on a regular basis... When I see them going up and down the aisles, they're sitting there just like staring at the wall. It's just been like, whoa. Yeah. Like, where and they is ha- it? They have to have where a is it? Like, is it around here? And they're always just like looking for something very specific. It's like, it's not that freaking hard. Oh, trust me. That, like, when I worked, I worked in electronics in Walmart. Okay. And oh, well, yeah, I would I would be on my break, and I would have people who stock grocery stop me yeah. and because the customer asked them where something was and they didn't know. I was like, "You stock this area? How do you not know where it's at?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about the same. Oh. But yeah, no, they'll they'll stare with their scanner in hand with a picture of the item. They'll sit there yeah. and stare at the the oh well, it's not where it's supposed to be. You got to substitute it. And it's literally because they plug shit all the damn time. And it's literally like two spots down. And it's like really. That's why I'll never trust you to fill my groceries. That and the meat. Like I have to like when I pick yeah, up meat, I have well. to look at it. And I have to make sure like it it stands up to my 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 uh, checks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, like, Especially it was fine movie. when we absolutely had to have it. Like we we got by, but it's not well, something JT that JT does it every week. I don't know. Mm. Well, it, that's because the food sucks out there. He's in Missouri. <laughs> like, it's all processed out the ass to start so it's all the same and yeah well I guess there's no difference in people stocking it but you just see some of the people they have filling orders you're just like I don't want them touching my food and, and, I mean people with stock it look just as homely so right yeah but I'm saying like yeah, in dessert like they're not gonna have like fresh anything so they don't have to worry about it uh where are we putting the corn uh my plate the uh the your place silos right next to the underground storage the silos next to the underground storage You can put it in either um, either one of them. Just that's where I've been putting mine. Anywhere over here at your farm. <laughs> yeah, any of those two silos. Uh, the only ones that are silos, I believe. I think my my truck might be still parked in front of it. To be honest with you. <laughs> yep, sure uh, enough is. Which, which one? The Detroit Six Seventy One or? Yeah, the one I'm in right now. The moving. Oh. That's not. That's the the Detroit 
So either of those underground ones. Cool. Yeah, I've been putting it in the old silos, but you can put it in either. Yeah, the boco in the storage, so. Son of a bitch. Can you push? I'm coming! I didn't know it was gonna be this steep. That did nothing. No. What's up, chat? How are you doing, sir? No, it's only gonna make it like well, we got a long ways to go. Cause I haven't even crested like the halfway point on the trailer. Yeah, just launch down the hill. Or it bred at me. Okay. That should give you traction, doesn't it? How about we do this, right? <laughs> Earthquake! Oh, I feel like that's making it worse! <laughs> but you're not even on a hill anymore! What is this logic? Yeah, I don't know. It's still like acting like it's on a hill. Oh, there we go. There we go. Alright, and uh, now we're moving. I actually saw that ahead of time and I was like, oh no, that's like the leveling tool in effect there's no way i'm gonna get up this and i tried to hit the brakes and nope why do you stop your work's not done Yeah, why are hell, 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 yeah, hell, hotel rooms so goddamn expensive in, uh, at, uh, in the college, around the colleges? Uh, depends on when you're trying to go there. I just, I, I was looking, because, it, so, my wife's got to stay over Thursday night, so I was like, let me just see if I can find a hotel room nearby that is, like for for that night, so I don't have to come back the next morning. I can just, you know, I can stay go over. to the hotel and come back because they they. I asked if I could just stay with her, and they're like, "Well, nope. pre-COVID you could, but yeah. you know now it's it's a it's a game day decision pretty much." She said because yep. if she has a roommate, then you won't be able to stay. Right. So I was like, let me see like how much a a room is and all the hotels around the college are like two hundred dollars a night whereas if you go just down the road to the airport you're talking like 70 bucks a night <laughs> there could be that there's an event that's that weekend what school is it you pen might be the um it might be like march madness or um there could be something else going on for sports that weekend. I guess it's the third on Thursday. But also, like, the, the hotels right around the college are always more expensive. 
Always. Like when I went to um, last year, I went to the Michigan game. And like we couldn't stay anywhere in Ann Arbor. One, because there's like not a bunch of hotels to begin with. But two, um, like game day weekend, we had to stay in like Traverse City, which is like freaking like hour drive. And it was the cheapest place that we could find a hotel. This is for a football game. Like, who knows? And there's like various graduations, there's like pinning ceremonies, there's a bunch of shit that goes into that. We were, we were considering because we don't know what time her surgery is going to be getting one the night before so if it's like first thing in the morning like we don't have to drive two hours especially because right. our uh gymnast one's going to be staying with with uh my dad and the stepmom so we're like we don't want to like have to leave at like four o'clock in the morning and drop her off yeah, there be gone for like a super long time if you don't have to yeah so well she got uh, call from the the hospital day, and they approved the surgery, all that. So it, it's it's a go. Good. And uh, she said that she doesn't know exactly what time, but it's probably going to be in the yeah. afternoon because there's two uh, people in front of her. So she's saying about one thirty-five is when their report time is going to be in. So that actually worked out pretty good yeah yeah all sounds about right so it just I have to now cause I was I was like I was kinda hoping she wanted to do the, the night before that way she can handle it but now it's now that she's gonna be in the hospital and it's just me staying in the hotel for one night now I it, the responsibility falls on me to find something I'm I'm comfortable with yeah it's like ah, so you can yell at me for spending money Yep. I told her I'm easy. No, Just give me like a how bed. Far away. Yeah. How yeah. far away do you want to stay? <laughs> I was just going to go right there. The, the uh, Oh, just right in town. Yeah. The, the airport's like right down the road. Philadelphia airport. And they have a ton of hotels around there for under a hundred bucks a night. Yeah. Then just do that. Yeah. Breakfast in the like morning. What, I'm good to go. Yeah. Like what's it to you? Like driving an extra... 10 or 15 minutes when like literally there's nothing you can do all day yeah. so so I'm gonna just stay with her until until they kick me out and then I'll just go to the hotel for the night yep and I'll be I mean checkouts what like 10 11 these days so dude it's like 10 yeah so Occasionally, by 10, 10 o'clock, I'll already be back at the hospital. Yeah. So. But it's like also with COVID, it's like all of these places that relied on patronage use this as an opportunity to just be like, well, we're going to set the rules that we actually wanted to do for so long, but would have faced severe backlash if we had done. It's like, well, now if we all do it, like they don't have a freaking choice so we don't have to explain ourselves so now everywhere's checkouts at 10 i was up in vermont a couple months ago and like we actually stayed at a place that had an 11 o'clock checkout and i was like wow like isn't that nice but 
you know the places I've traveled post pandemic. Um, uh, most of them have been 10 o'clock, especially California. F that place. Oh, but yeah, we said one place that we did one place that was like 9 30. 9 30. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going out hell. then. If I'm if yeah. I'm staying in the hotel, I'm on vacation. I'm not getting up. Well, that was our thing, but they made it so uh, blatantly clear that you should not, like, basically, like, spend as little time away from your unoccupied vehicle as possible because the likelihood of it getting broken into is extremely high. So they said 9:30 checkout, and it's just like I'm there at 8:45, being like. We're getting the hell out of here. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Like, seriously? There was a couple wrestlers that did a vlog. I think that I think they were in California. Dude, San and Francisco was sketchy. They they left their bags with their gear in the in the van and they come out the next morning and the whole bu- windows busted out and their suitcases with their gear are gone. They had to borrow gear from someone. <laughs> Jeez, I I never leave anything in in vehicle. Like if they see it, they're gonna take it. What challenge are you? I'm so bad that I won't even like if I have like I'm charging my phone and I run into the store. I don't even leave my charger out where it can be seen. I'll wrap that some bitch up and stick it into my glove box or the side the center console. You know, I don't leave that out. For people to see, I'm that funny about it. Just like my wife has a habit of leaving her store key in the in the car, and I'm like, no, dude, don't leave that where people can freaking see it. It's just the key to the store. Yet they don't know that. They'll bust the window out, take it, and see if they can get into something. That's awkward. Why's my forklift just chilling out there? I love you. You're cool. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm taken.
Will I take all that? I've been on mute this entire time. Hey, yeah, you've been on mute this entire time. Wow. There's a whole story and everything. Damn. It's the same about my... What was the last thing you heard from me? Uh, San Francisco's weird. Oh, yeah, no, San Francisco is the scariest place to go because when you get off the plane and are going through the airport, they have signs being like, don't leave any valuables in your car. And you're like, okay. And then you go to the rental place and they're like, don't leave any valuables in your car. And they have signs. And they're also like, we're not liable for anything that gets stolen from your car. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Good to know. And then you go to the place that you're parking your car. And they're like, did you leave any valuables in your car? <laughs> I'm like, nah. Nah, I got the message. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to. And they're like, Good, yeah, don't. Drag Slayer. I love, I love his, his uh, library. That's it's kind of how it was in Virginia Beach. It's like, it's like, oh my god! Imagine living in that place. When you check, like, I understand all of these people live in like the tourism, like industry. But like, my god, can you imagine just having to explain to people, like, like I was saying, like I just leave my, yeah, I'm running into Whole Foods real quick. Like I just leave my wallet in my car because I don't need it. No, I can't. No, I've never leave my wallet in my car. Like, I lock my car, but like in the two minutes I'm gone, like there's a zero percent chance where I live that someone's gonna break into my car and steal my wallet. Like, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, we because that when we checked in the hotel in Virginia Beach, we stayed the, the night. They they when you checked in, they're like, make sure you don't leave any valuables in your car. Like when you the whole spiel, the spiel like you know we're not responsible yeah. for any, any any damage or property into your in your in your vehicle. Yeah, I'm like yeah yeah got it. It's like how about you uh, do better uh, keeping these people out of your parking garage? How about that? Like there's only one key. way in That's and one way out. Yeah. But this one was, it was all, it, it was, uh, the parking started on the second floor. So there's literally only one way in and out of that parking garage unless you have a key card. So how about you uh, have a security guard and people come walking up there and be like, can you have a key card? Well, it's cheaper to just notify the people. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, this tire is security guard. <laughs> We're not responsible for anything. That's just like the level of. I mean, you know, like as a as a visitor to the area, like you do appreciate the fact that you know they're giving you a heads up so that you're not completely blindsided by your window getting broken in to and like, everything in your car getting taken. You know, it's like, that's nice. That's nice. You can't hate that. Well, watch but me. At the same time, it's like, oh my God. Like, you guys should probably figure out a solution yeah. to this problem. If you're going to the extent of, like, putting up signs at the airport. So that way, people fly into San Francisco and they're not like oh I can't wait to see the scenery they're like oh my god make sure that we lock the car I had never really been anywhere else like that from a tra nope I nope I take that back I I stayed it we stayed at a hotel in Inglewood one time for one night. You're brave. That was, that was effing terrifying. Because when we got to the hotel door, I'm sure I've told you this. When we got to the hotel door, it, was, it wasn't it was closed. It was open. 
Oh, fuck <laughs> that. No. <laughs> I thought my worst or worst hotel story was was worse, but no, no, that that takes the cake. Mm-hmm. And there was a light on, and it wasn't even the main light. It was the bathroom. And it was like, oh my god, come on. Someone's passed out in there with the needle still in there. Oh, oh no, no, take take that back. Because we started out going to a room and we like went on, went to do the card for the door and it came back to um, declined. I'm like, what the hell? So I like pushed on the door and someone was just like, occupied. <laughs> there was someone in the room. We've had that happen before. We. Uh, we were looking at hotel. We went up. My, my mother wanted to look at different hotels that are available up there around Lancaster, and she asked for a a card to look at a room. And the hotel straight up gave us a card. We go and find the room. My mom uses the card to unlock the door, open up. There's people just chilling in there, and they like jump yeah. up and like, "What's going on?" And my mother is like, ah, yet, yet the front desk just gave us this key to check out the room. Yeah. Went back up there. She handed him back the card. She's like, God, there's people staying in that room. There is. Yeah. That was our first experience. And then the second one was the door open. And then like based off of our first experience, we're like, uh, yeah, I'm not going in there. Uh, Going. I ended, I ended up going in there. I went in with a flashlight, like to my best, like clear the area. But then I had, then I called them, and I was like, "You got to come up here and and have look around the place because mm -mm. it could be like a creeper hiding under the bed or something like that." And we went. Uh, when we went to Hershey Park, we cause... Hershey Park, not Hershey Park. Yes, it's supposed to be. Oh no, this, the hotel was in Harrisburg. Um, oh, but we, my wife got uh, free cause through her blog. She got uh, free passes to Hershey Park, so we were already planning to go up there for a week anyway. So my wife was like, maybe we could just find a hotel in between the two areas that we can spend all the day at Hershey Park and make a short drive and the next, next day we'll be where, where we're staying at. And so she went and just found a cheap hotel in Harrisburg, which is like was mm. just outside Hershey. Problem number one. Yeah. And uh, we go in and I can already tell like, because again, they had the signs posted and you're like, okay. And then you go in and the, the freaking lobby was dated so like straight out of the 80s it was like yeesh but the the staff was like super friendly and everything and like that that was they were, the, the staff shockingly was the best part of staying there and um so she you know i get all checked in and everything and she's like making recommendations i was like what's the what, concierge you know, like, yeah she's like i was like i was like she goes have you had you guys had dinner and you, if you're looking for something like good pizza here, you know, like, I was like, wow, usually you have to be like, you want any good pizza joints? No, she's just like flipping out there. I think she was just like, right, so usually excited. like, there's a number for Domino's. Yeah. I think she was so excited to have someone to talk to <laughs> that she was just like chatting away. So she gave me the car and we, like, I parked the car and we, we grab our stuff out and we, we go up and elevator door opens and I shit you not it looks like a scene out of a horror movie like it's super dark and the light at the end of the hallway is just flickering I was like fuck no I've seen this movie hell no 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 so we're yeah, walking down there. the hallway and you could like the floor is like you uneven you can feel like where you're sinking into the floor I was like I'm gonna fall through this fucking floor <laughs> like mm -hmm. And then I get to the 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 room, and I was like, "Oh shit!" As I, we should have just paid, you know, three times for an extra night at the place where we're staying. Like this is mm -hmm. uh, this is shady as shit. 
and all night. Like I was, like I, I was sat there awake all night just listening to people walk up and down the hallway. I'm like, no, yeah, because that makes you wonder. Like, why was the lady at the front desk so friendly? Yeah. You know, it's like one of those like one of us situations like trying to get you to come in there so there's no way out needless to say my wife and I will never like just willy nilly book a room somewhere anymore just yeah we, we do the same with we do the same with Airbnb and hotels Dude, Airbnb's a fucking ripoff. At least when you book them through, like, booking.com and shit. Well, just do we it were, through Airbnb, dude. Well, we were looking booking.com because we were looking at, like, places down in Tennessee to stay, you know, oh, a little bit longer booking, for cheaper. You mean booking doc, yeah. So they have, like, the Airbnbs through there, and shit, the, like, the one was, like, it's, like, um, I think it was like 1700 for a week and that was like we're like oh yeah you know that's that's easily that's easily and it's like a, and they got a like cabin with great and... views yeah and then with all the extra fees added in it's almost a thousand dollars more yeah. I was like that is a fucking that's false advertising Like, well you just gotta get used to the Airbnb market my friend that's shit that's... rip off that is a fuck. When you're like, oh, seventeen hundred dollars, and then it's like, oh, by the way, with all the fees, it's gonna be twenty. I add, yeah, I add about like four hundred dollars to any Airbnb that we get, unless it's one night. If it's multiple nights, I add about four hundred dollars. That's because there's the fees that go along with Airbnb. Then they have their cleaning fees. Then there's the service fee. And there's taxes, and then there's all this crap. So I don't. That's 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 tipping pretty much. Like why why is the cleaning fee separate from the what what why are you so basically you're paying a, a extra like I'm for shit that should cost. be included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But depending on where you go, it actually is cheaper than a hotel. Oh yeah, no, don't get me wrong. It was it was cheaper than hotels, but you're like when you're looking through it and you're like, oh yeah, no, this is a great place. And then you're like, you're like, wow, that's in the budget. And then you look up and it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, it was five hundred dollars yeah. for this, three hundred dollars for that. And you're like, no, like that. Yeah, I mean we do that. We only use Airbnbs. Um, if there's like when we go on vacation and there's a very specific area that we're looking to stay in and there isn't any kind of decent hotel then we'll do that or if we're going to a place and staying there for multiple days it's like when we went out to Breckenridge like we got an Airbnb because staying at a hotel there was gonna be like Two hundred dollars more. Just like the thing yeah, creeping out with the whole Airbnb thing is they're allowed to have cameras in the public area. Oh no no no! They have to they have to disclose if they do that. And I always when I'm in Airbnb, I assume I'm being recorded because let's be honest, there's a bunch of freaking creepers out there so yeah, even no, if they yeah. don't disclose it um, they're gonna have some things so I know about most of most of the bugs and cameras that are quote unquote hidden so I always look for those Because, like, you have the ones that are in the plugs for the outlets. You have the ones that are behind mirrors. You have the ones that are, um... In thermostats. So, you just look for all those. And 
just, like pretty much just assume. <laughs> well, I'm, you just assume you're being recorded. Well, maybe I, you know, maybe I want to walk around in the living room butt ass naked, like. Oh, oh, maybe I that's mean, what I just do. Then don't look quickly turn off all the cameras. It doesn't keep me from doing what I do, like. doesn't it's just <laughs> you know what someone's gonna have to watch this like god <laughs> bless them because they're probably gonna turn that shit off immediately yeah, i'll just get, get a leopard print thong and just walk around in it yeah before we not, unpack yeah. everything they'll be like oh shit hell no and just turn it off i'm like, a nudist it, baby it's, it's surveillance for them and they're hoping to catch like something good and for every one thing that's something good, they're going to have to deal with like a hundred that's something, oh no. And it's like, you know what? Let let this stay be one of those, oh no, situations where he just fast forwards through the whole thing. Like, I don't know. No, nope, waste of time. Just all of these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's he doing with that doorknob? Oh, I've got to replace that. What? He's <laughs> licking it. What? And he's pleasuring himself at the same time. Okay. <laughs> That's just. You know what? I'm done with this weekend. <laughs> and I'm just like. Sorry, Mrs. PJs. I just had to do that for like 15 seconds just to. <laughs> In case anyone's watching. <laughs> <laughs> she walks out of the room and sees you doing that. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck are um, you doing? I'm just <laughs> do, <laughs> taking security measures. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> now I just gotta do this to every doorknob just in case there's any others in the hallway. Just gotta figure out what the cameras are. Just gotta figure out what the cameras are. <laughs> Might be one in the hallway. Oh my god. <laughs> There are a few uh, class action lawsuits ongoing to get rid of the ridiculous fees for Airbnb and Verbo stuff like that. So that would be nice. Because, like, literally, if I had, if it weren't an inconvenience, like, I didn't have to live essentially with the person but like if i had an extra space for someone to stay like say i, I had an in-law apartment or something like that like yeah. sure shit i would rent that out you charge like a hundred bucks a night like that'd be some good income Unless they're doing math. I don't know if I could do that. Like, I'd have, like, if I had, like, separate property, like, for sure. 
I don't know if I could have people stay on the same property as me. Cause people are too fucking weird these days, man. I can do it. Around here, like, the... It's, if you have enough land, it's pretty common to do, like, a... Like, separated two-car garage. Like, not attached to the house. Uh, with, like, a in-law suite on top of it. So if that were the situation, I'd be like, yeah, rent that out. It's just if I detected a pattern of the cops coming there every weekend. Like you want to know, like, I, I guess, I don't know. Like, you can't really hate the people. that have cameras everywhere like it's creepy but also like don't you want to know what goes on in your own property i feel like it falls in a gray area because like... i would imagine that, that like if someone just rented your house or your apartment like let's just okay. call it like once a month right and then sold drugs from there and then the fbi came or the ATF and raided your place. Like, one, don't, like, it'd be kind of questionable if you had any liability. And two, like, you would have to be, like, thoroughly investigated to make sure that it wasn't you being a part of it right it, I, mean, I, I respect other people's privacy at that point like outside for sure like out like yeah but like okay all right Again, worst case scenario, and this is the way I think about things. Like, what if they're doing uh, a little bit of a little uh, like sex for hire industry and running that out of your detached in-law suite? Well, then I'll charge them for an extra person because, like, I'll have. When they pull up there, I'll have uh, oh, right, footage like, on you're gonna, the driveway, and you'll see an extra person come in. Like, they're not on the, the, I'm the saying, rental do you agreement. Even, do you even want to be investigated for that? Because you will be. No, you, you can be. Just be like, hey, I ran it to him. I didn't know that's what was going on. All right, and then someone works up or looks up your criminal background, and it's like, oh. Okay. Yeah, I get down like that. <laughs> How does this freaking work? I don't know. I think renting like that is a little wild. No, 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 no.
say where to place it? You know what we can do? Sell that shit. And then we just buy more. What's it say? Christmas tree farm? Yeah, Christmas trees. <laughs> That's what it is. Yep. Can't get the Christmas trees to fill the pallet though, so. I guess mm. we're gonna set them to selling, so just sell them directly. Kind of a bummer, because I don't want to get like a huge truckload of it. <laughs> of Christmas trees. Right, of Christmas trees, yeah. Interesting how the Christmas tree industry is just blown up. It's actually kind of rather sad that how, like, a lot of the places that sold real Christmas trees around here. Yeah, have, yeah, have yeah. Going out of business. Yeah. It's really sad. Like we normally do a uh, uh, cut your own Christmas tree because around here they have, well, I'm sure they have them down there, like actual Christmas tree farms. Yeah, we used to have one right down the road here. Yeah, and it, it and they stopped. It, they're like, oh, yeah. But here's the crazy thing about Christmas tree farms. So you know that they actually have to plan their finances. Like, um, I think it's like six years in advance. Because the average Christmas tree size between like six to eight feet. Uh, it takes about six years for them to get to that size from the time they plant them. But it doesn't take into consideration like excess rain, lack of rain, extreme weather, anything like that. And as you know, we've had all of that. So a lot of them are going under because like they can't predict what's going to happen five years from now. Right, and everybody's going to fake trees. If there was a way to do a real cut your own tree and just magically have the lights put on it, I would do that. <laughs> Putting lights on aren't that bad. Mm. It's like one of the two arguments that we have every year. I enjoy putting lights on the tree. Especially well, we have, I have to, the, the, we have to put it in a corner, so it's yeah, you just like, slide it out. Yep. Yeah. You put the yeah. lights on and you slide yeah. it back in place. Yep. One would think. Oh, 
Oh, you don't do that? Uh, try to. Listen, I've, I've also had every year, I've had to work down the size of the tree. It's, it's like... Our first year together, I had to literally cut off two feet from the top and a foot <laughs> from the bottom. Because it was a special needs tree. Sorry, what? Yeah. Meaning, <laughs> so it's a special it needs tree. It essentially only grew on one side. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'd have that side of the tree facing the wall. But it was also like the branches didn't start until like literally four feet up. And I was like, even if we had this thing cut, like it's still gonna be too tall. Like, sure enough, once we had the tree cut for us, it was still like 12 feet. And our ceiling's nine feet at our old place. So I had to sit out there with the freaking hacksaw and like chop it down. So I was like, never again. And my wife only wants like the biggest, bushiest trees. This was the first year that I was just like, you know what? Let's get one that's like six feet. I can pick it up myself and decorate it. I can also take it out to the trash myself. That was the comical part about the uh, last time we got the uh, a real tree. Is we took it to uh, public or, or the city mm. department here. Yeah. Basically, your public works has uh, where you can drop take them up the there. Place. Yeah, drop yeah. them off at the yard. And they burn and it. Well, no, these they they, they just dump them in the trash. Cause they got a big bin out there, so I, I went. I pulled up out in the front gate. It's like, it's a, just pull up the front gate, and someone will come out to you. So I pulled up to the gate. I mean, it's it's a, it's a tiny. I'm living in a tiny town, so it's a tiny little yard. It's got like two shop buildings, and it's a small little fenced-in area next to the railroad tracks. And he, a guy comes out. He was like, "Got a Christmas tree here?" And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Where you where you want me to put it?" He goes, "Hold it right here." He goes up across the yard, hops in the the tractor with a bucket out front, comes around, parks up next to the truck. He's like, just toss it in the bucket. So I toss it in the bucket. He turns around, not even a football field away from me. I'd say like a quarter of a football field. And dumps it in the dump, the, the trash bin there. <laughs> could have done that myself man you didn't have yeah. to go fire up that tractor waste that much fuel just to do that i think he just wanted to get in yeah. the tractor i mean it really depends on what they want to do with it like when i worked for the dpw in my town like we had a communal spot in town where it's like if you want to dump your real tree here's the place to do it and then i literally spent a day and a half throwing Christmas trees in a wood chipper. Now, if that isn't the most depressing thing <laughs> you could ever do as a person, I don't know what it is. But I felt I felt like a horrible person. It's, you're taking everyone's Christmas tree like they're happy 
the holiday stuff and you're just throwing it in a wood chipper. And then my actual hometown, they're like, oh yeah, just dump it in a pile here. And then they would just set the whole thing on fire and just burn it. They do the. They didn't do it when we get. Cause I remember growing up when the tree come down, it got thrown in the back of the ranger, and uh, me and Dad helped in the the Ford Ranger cruise down dirt road over across the state line, threw it on the side of the road. All the Christmas trees are watered and now I'm producing Christmas cheer. I can't believe they've made three of those games. I can't believe people actually play them. That's crazy.
now that I speed. I've been working hard, yeah. I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, nah, unlikely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, I see. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know I do ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain, uh. Alright, sorry. Text me back my wife. Girls can get a jetpack on a damn animal right into the gas station and cause mayhem. Okay, you got me there. I don't think there is. But whoever thought of that? I'm like... Let's strap a... Rocket pack to a goat. Send it full send into a gas station. I need to get another wagon. I think my thing is 35. Oh, that's 20 foot. So yeah, that should work, a smaller one. Or do I sell that and just use... Yeah, I think I'm just going to use the Tom, the John Deere for... John Deere for grain, Gleaner for corn. I'm okay with that. Pure genius. It's just one guy that was home and he's like, he was just like, what can we do to a goat? And he was like, let's just. Let's make a goat simulator. I want us to do as like being a uh, a goat, and then as he's he's developing it, he's like, like he lets intrusive thoughts win. And he's like, what if, what if we gave the goat a jetpack? Hmm. What if, what if we made him able to like ram cars and knock them off the road?
He just every intrusive thought they had, he just put it in the game. And it was like, all right. And there were just enough people who was like, you know what? I kind of want to see what happens in that scenario. And now they're on their third game. Dude, I'm so I'm I'm so amped. Our, our new couch is coming, and it's one of those modular uh, sectionals, so you can like rearrange it. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited <laughs> just to like rearrange it and like and have like movie night with the with like the two the love seat with the the sides going down. It's like makes it pretty much a, a bed. Oh, I can't wait. I've hit peak adult level that I'm super excited about couch. Like I didn't give like, I, I'm I'm so right because we got this couch from uh, it was a storage place that like they I guess it was like a unclaimed I am um, someone let their their storage unit go and it was just a couch sitting in there and it's been good to us but it's getting it, it we've had it for God I don't know how long and like my my recliner the the handle for, well handles on both sides have busted like two or three times each so i've had to replace them constantly and you know we've had now our kids are grown but, but you know it lasted both of them being young jumping all over so there you know there's rips and tears in it so i'm, I'm glad to be like finally getting rid of this thing i'm just kind of dreading it because it's so heavy when put it in perspective how heavy this freaking couch is the uh, movers, when they moved it, it took three of them to move it, and they were they were struggling, and that's just pushing it on the, like the furniture dollies. And the guy was like, "My man over here got the heaviest couch ever." And someone who moves furniture for a living was bitching about how heavy it was, but um, yeah, something nicer. It's, it'd be like my first like brand new couch that I've owned. Like every every time we've gotten a couch, we've always gotten it like second hand. So to have like a, like purchase our own first couch, it's like a, a step into adulthood, isn't it? Yeah, I've I've never noticed that how heavy it was because like we had it back. We've had it for so long, and it. Like, me and my dad moved it in, but we were struggling when we were moving it in. And we just thought it was, you know, we're both out of shape. But no, these these three guys, I mean, they were young, like, fit guys. That were struggling to push it on the wheel dot, the furniture dollies. I mean, they couldn't do it through the door. They had to lift it through the door. God, please. Yeah, I'd be good. I told my wife, like, what are we going to do with it? I was like, I'm going to put it out on the back patio and just be like, post it for free. First come, first serve. If no one wants it, then I'm just going to pay for the, the garbage company to take it. I'll drag that bitch over to the dumpster. <laughs> It 
It was act the our new cows were supposed to be here. Um, Thursday? And the something about the shipping label was screwed up so they had to resend it or something like that. So now it's not gonna be here until uh, tomorrow's the twenty third, so the Monday or Sunday would be the so it'll be here Monday. bed in the family room that's freaking heavy. If I had to do it over again, I would weigh it to get my in-law leather sofa recliner. White leather. Ew. White leather is probably six years old. Nothing wrong with it. Just sat on the curb. Yeah, but it's white. Ugh. Especially with kids. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's a bad idea, Steve. <laughs> But no, yeah, no, I, uh, I actually had, uh, a sectional, um, that had the hide a bed in it, and that wasn't even as heavy as this damn thing is. These recliners are freaking heavy. It's a recliner on each side. But, um, I really wanted one, and I couldn't find one that was, was comfortable enough for us. We looked and looked and looked. I wanted one that had the little... Um, where it, it, it's like a shelf that slides out and then the bed pulls up so it transfers it so you have the chase lounge and the like couch and then the, the couch slides out you pull up the bed part and it makes one big like bed area I want one of those but we just couldn't find like everyone we found it was just super uncomfortable to sit on so we gave up on that idea I was like if we get a sectional we can always move it around to fit different area oh you're here oh well, now you're talking up my alley oh what with that chase lounge oh yeah well I was saying because we were talking about high couch. feds I want one that had the, sh the chase lounge and the way it's like a, almost like a shelf or a drawer that pulls out and then yeah, the bed and pulls it has up. Yeah, the second half of the bed that comes out. Yeah. yeah. So like I, that's what I wanted. I was like, I was like, yeah, sign me up. That's what I want. Like I've always wanted one with the chase lounge, but never could find one. So yeah. uh, we went we went to a bunch of different places looking at <laughs> couches and. Couldn't find yeah, one of those that were comfortable, like to sit on for like an extended period of time. Like, yeah, because you don't want like the classic like fold out couch. Like, nice Pierce. They have the ones that slide out and pop up, and that's where someone can sleep. Yeah. There's varying levels levels of comfort on those. Most of the ones we hit, we we tried out. Like there was no way I was sitting. Of course, I was going. We, we picked a really bad time to look because I had my back issues going on. So, yeah. I mean, I still do, but I'm I'm better off now than when I was, you know, last week and the week before. So we ended up settling on the modular sectional. So I was like, you know, I can still do what yeah. I want, just have to move it around a little bit. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's what we did. I mean, we custom built ours. Ended up doing that because it's like... Well, like there was nothing that was going to fit the space that we needed it for, so might as well just make it and do the modular one. Yeah, that was the other problem we were running into. Like, we have a limited space to work on, so we didn't mm -hmm. want to get something. Like, the one we were looking at was, like, a great deal. Had everything we, like, it, it didn't have, so 
basically we're gonna get just get like a, a ottoman so you know, yep. my wife can put her feet up. Yep. That's but what we ended up doing. It was like it was on sale, like four hundred dollars off, and we're like, it's like meant to be because when we've been looking at, and I was like, we're not gonna have room for that in our living room. I was like, it's just, mm. it's just too long. It's, it was like, with our current arrangement, it was like five inches too big. Too long. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, there's no, there's no way. I was like, there is literally no way. I was like, if you just lob off five inches, like the armrest, I was like, we'll, we can make it work. Yep. I said, but yep. as it stands now, there's no way. So we got to looking around and I was like, I was like, you know what? What about like the, the modular sectionals where you can move them around and my wife got my soon as my wife saw like a video of how you could configure them she was like i'm sold i, I didn't even have to like do any more oh, <laughs> any more pitching i was she was like i'm sold soon because like i was telling steve like i'm like i'm kind of excited to have like the where you just, it's like the two-seater and you put the 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 other sections out so you can like make like a mini bed for movie night i was like yeah. that looks so fucking comfortable i know we we had a good one that was like a well it's like an l-shaped couch with a mm. chaise lounge and then you could pull out the bed in the middle and then turn it into like a gigantic bed and like that seemed pretty good but it just wasn't gonna fit into our exact space and then the other option was a u-shaped couch that had the same option of pulling out the middle cushions and they rise up and then it turns into like a big ass bed but that would look weird in our space so we ended up doing like a custom made one so now I have so my wife gets the uh, big corner which like our couch depth is like 43 inches it's huge it's insane it's like far too big for our space but it works so she gets an entire corner and the long part of the L-shaped couch. And then I I have the ottoman. And I can just like pull that in or push it out. Depending on what I'm going to use it for. But I think that's, that's kind of the way to go. Mm, especially for apartment life, because that like the other thing that yeah. sold me was the, the storage. So like we could just I was like we don't know what I was like we don't know where we're gonna be in a year or two years, and we want to be able to have like the versatility of moving it instead of getting the couch that has like the well, the only downside was under the. Like if you did the U U shaped couch under like the Shea part, you could lift that up, and it had like uh, it was like lifting up like the back part of like a hatch car. Yeah. Those like air pump things, and it was storage underneath. And I was like, oh jeez, the great to have the storage. So the one thing it doesn't have is the storage. That's what, this, this one has like storage under each seat, which is yeah. Crazy. So I told her I was like, you know, all those blankets that we have sitting around. Yep. I was like easily stashed away. That's what I say. But we were looking at. Although I'm like at the same time, like we got rid of like night, both nights there, like the side tables and the coffee table. Because they just wouldn't fit with a new couch. So we had to get a smaller coffee table and smaller nightstands. And I was like, you know, like you're gonna have less room to put your crap. That's why. The, that's the the 
drawback, but I was t showing my wife because on those vine, on that vine thing, shit shows up where, like, it's like a cube that you can sit on your 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 couch and it has like cup holders and it's got stuff where you put. I was like, you can just get one of those. I was like, we can get rid of these tables that take up unnecessary space just so you can set a cup on it every now and then. I was like, with these cubes, like you can, just, you got cup holders, and then the. The benefit to the modular couch, they actually have, or the modular sectional, they actually have the little um, accessory thing that you can slide in there that has, like, drop down, like, a uh, like little shelf and your cup holders and everything. Yeah. So, I was like, we don't really need them, because literally all I do is, with mine, is I set a, my, my cup on it when I'm sitting on the couch like it's just it's in the way we don't need it as we can use that space to get a little bit of a bigger couch so she it didn't once she saw it the video she there was no there was no further pitching needed she was all on board hmm. well that's good because she had she, like well, uh, me too we had our we we've looked at it. it she, first time we seen it, I think it was like two years ago. We first seen this couch, and we I mean we liked everything about it, the overall feel, the you know everything. And then when we went, we start looking in the couches again to see that it was like four hundred dollars off on sale. We're like, this, like what's the chance that it goes on sale the same week that we start looking for couches? Like that's like a sign. That this is what we need. And I start doing measurements, and I was like, eh. I don't want to yeah. commit to something because we're about to be moved into a, a newly renovated apartment, which they still haven't provided us a layout for. Like, they said it's going to follow pretty much the same blueprint, but it's going to feel like you have more room. So I want to know what this, the, you know, I don't want to get something and be limited on space and then the, the new one the new apartment right I'm, I'm gonna be really really upset because they tore off all of the outside storage units that were out back they tore all yeah. those down yeah, that. and if we don't have that that's that's gonna piss me off that's gonna piss me off highly because that's where we store everything because we don't really have much storage inside yeah, so we're like talking about Christmas like, you know, decorations. Some of the apartments that. around, yeah, some of the apartments around here, like yeah. that's where they put their washer and dryer. Yeah. So I was kind of like, I was, I told my wife, I was like, I kind of hope that's what they do is they move all the HVAC stuff out in that storage unit and give us the indoor space to store stuff. But they just completely <laughs> ripped that off. I'm like, Ugh. yeah. I mean, our biggest problem is storage. Yep. You really don't get it. It's like, I look at my parents' house, and, like, they have a whole attic. And granted, at this point, all of their attic is just filled with stuff for if there's grandchildren. So it's, like, all of the childhood toys that I grew up with. Like, they never got rid of any of them. Nope. They're no, they the get attic. rid of them because kids are only in the smartphones these days. Oh, no. If I had a kid, <laughs> no, no. You say that. But. We held out as long as we could on the whole smartphone deal. I literally won't let it happen. <sighs> when they're coming home, I'm like, everybody wants my phone Everyone number. Everyone else has they this. Want, they want to give yeah. your phone number out to, Listen, to your I, friends. Listen, I feel like I'm like, yeah. good practice with having my special needs cat where I'm just like, no. Nope. Yeah, you know how frustrated that cat no. makes you until you just finally give in to what, what it wants? I don't give in to it. You're still a I couple times, like you're, you're. I yell at it and I stomp my feet, and then. And it does it anyway. Don't learn this lesson. Mm. It just stops. <laughs> oh shit. You know, I've I've seen parents do like their best, but like 
depends on the situation. So, like, I went out to dinner with my wife's friend that we hadn't, or she hadn't seen in quite some time. And then since then, she had a kid. So, I had to bring her kid. And then brought, like, a brick that had, like, a bunch of, like, switches and levers and stuff just to like, keep the kid interested. And that worked for most of the evening and like the final half an hour and the kid started to make a ruckus and she was like all right well you know i tried not to do this but like in dire situations i'll do this and she pulled out like coco melon and threw Cocoa that on melon. yep and then threw that on and the kid's pupils dilated like i've never seen before that cocoa, cocoa melon crack. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like, I understand the pros of that. Like, you can keep your kid quiet for an hour, but, like, look at the repercussions. I mean, your kid was just working on, like, cognitive function and, like, coordination. And now it's just sitting there watching cocoa melon. <laughs> so... I'm not, I'm not even talking about like I'm not talking about I'm talking about like once they start getting into like you know late elementary middle school because every kid's got a phone nowadays so oh yeah I know I know that's the biggest challenge like I, I don't know how I would handle that because like me growing up like we had the family cell phone and if you went out you took the family cell phone in case anything happened, but it wasn't it wasn't for texting, it wasn't for phone calls, it was just if anything happened. And then plus all the stuff that they do on social media, like you have to keep up with the social media platforms and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you told me about, there's apparently a new social media yeah, yeah, the VSCO. Yeah. VSCO. Not new. Yeah, it's not new. So what a lot of the kiddos are doing are, like, they have an Instagram profile. And, like, their parents are aware of that. And then they have a link in their, like, bio thing for their VSCO. And then that's where they post their pictures. And then they have spam accounts. So they have their regular account, which is what their parents know about. And then they have what they call a spam account, which is where they actually do all of their postings. So that's how they skirt the system of like, the parents being like, well, we need to monitor your social media presence. So we're going to be friends with you and we're going to see everything you post. And they're like, OK, fine. And then they go and do that stuff. So like they'll have a regular TikTok account and then they'll have like a their TikTok account plus spams. And then that's where they actually do their stuff. Hope you're taking notes. Oh, see, no, my kids were screwed because we, they, as the trends were picking up, we were catching like the whole, during the whole COVID thing, kids were doing the Google Docs, and we picked up on it before even the schools were picking up on it. So, my wife has. My wife can go in and see everything that her kid does on her on her phone. Everything. The oldest one, she's off on her own now, so that that's out the window. But the youngest one, my wife can go in there and see like if she logs into a different account, she sees it. Oh. So it's like um, 
it's an app, it's a, a, a parental control app that's not like super intrusive where you're not like you can't see every is single that message Wi-Fi that you're just in general huh is that only on wi-fi or is that just in general engine it's it's a uh, app it's a parental control app through apple or something like that she was going on about oh or maybe Jesus. it's an app I don't, I don't know but she can go in there like if uh like kid refusing to do her chores pisses me off while she's at work i'm just like she won't do her damn chores and all of a sudden you hear stomp 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 coming down the stairs <sighs> oh, she puts she like, like puts the through this, she, no no this is through this is through apple or through to the phone like i can i have i can do all that through xfinity but my wife has some sort of app that she goes through and she can cut off immediately the time right then i know you can do that through xfinity but she can actually set up time frames and all this other jazz and like I said, yeah again through xfinity because she's like she found out nine o'clock you can't access your phone for social media but this one gives her like tells her what time she uses each app and like what account she's using on it and all that other stuff so she can monitor and all it's not going to show you every single what? message that she sends it's not you know, like it's not super intrusive to the, like because I've that I've always believed it was a fine line where you got to yeah. give your kids some sort of private privacy. I was about to say the same right? thing. So, but when it comes to what accounts they're using, I feel like that's a necessary need to know. So, like you said, they don't have a bunch of different accounts where they're doing shit they're not supposed to be doing on it. So that's that's the plus side of that because. The youngest one actually did that. She set up multiple accounts and quickly got they got shut down, <laughs> shut down. But yeah, it See, yeah. The kids I mean, these days are like, are hindered. Me, like it wasn't that hard to like I I set up a separate email just for like gaming stuff. Like, I have my personal email and I have one that's just for gaming yeah, but see, we... through that second email address like you can just like sign up for whatever the hell you want we're the, the difference is we're the generation that figured that shit out and yeah. like, we, we got super curious about it so now we're they're not doing anything we don't already know so you keep you you can check that, but it, it's you know yeah but w- yeah you're dealing with the <laughs> the mid we we'll call it the mid millennials where it's just like yeah, yeah 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 you know we've kept up to a certain extent like we get it there's like older millennials they have no idea what the younger generation is capable of. We have the mid millennials, which are able to function in both worlds. And then you have the younger millennials that are just like completely clueless and can't handle it. But the VSEO thing is legit and... It's a photo and video editing app. How's that social media? It's like you don't even need a... Like, user account to be able to go on there. And look at these people. And like I said, most of the younger generation, they post nothing to Instagram and put their link to their VSEO in their like bio thing and that's where they post everything and then if they're not doing either of those things then they have a regular social media account or a spams social media account the spams one is the real one their one under their name is the fake one just to their parents happy (laughs) 
I can hear you writing notes. No, I'm trying to figure out what the site is. Every time I type in D, you said VCSO. V V S C O. Yeah, that says the professional grade presets, quality photo and video tools, and Warcraft. Or, or VCSO. Uh, I don't know. No, the only thing that comes up is the photo and video editor. I'll get you the link for the real thing. There's a lot. Okay, maybe that is, it says there's a lot and better looking filters and photo editing options than Instagram. Or frankly, yeah. No one important uses yeah. social media aspects because you're. VSEO. You're aware Instagram is bigger. Yeah, VSEO. Dot yeah. co. Your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control, and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day. Call it replication. Problem is, is like half the time they don't use the same. Uh, like handle they do on Instagram so maybe a little bit more difficult to research and also for the record to everyone it else was watching like i bucks a year? i only know this because i look up the ways that uh police departments will investigate you yeah no there's no way to, and i keep up on the social is, media trends you gotta because... pay for this no you don't yeah, i'm, I'm on the app right now no, you don't have to pay for it, dude. Yeah, it says uh, 60 bucks a month. Or 60 bucks a month, 60 bucks a year. No. No. They definitely have a free version. There's a weird other app outside of that. It's um Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's not like timetable, it's like something along those lines and it's like the equivalent of Snapchat. But both parties have like once they send a picture or request or something like that they have like x amount of time to reply to it and then uh take a picture of their surroundings or like take a picture from their phone ah, i forget what it's called
I don't see where they're making you pay. So I'm just going to send you the link. I'm just, I'm on the, the app on, your own account. on my phone, and it says tap to unlock seven days of free VCSO membership for free. And when you go to it, it says for pro, it costs $6 a year, plus is $30 a year. Yeah, if you go to the link that I just sent you, you should be able to set an account up for free. I mean, you can pay monthly, either eight dollars a month or thirteen dollars a month. I mean, I set up an account for free, but yeah. So I mean, if you already set up an account for free, that's all you need. It's all if you want to do that add-ons and stuff. So if you want like filters and backgrounds and shit like that. So, like, based on that, you should be able to, like, search to see, like, just because you have the profile now, you should be able to, like, search whatever you want. But it's crazy that, you know, the younger generation is finding different apps to be able to post social media, which, I mean, like, makes sense. I completely understand why they want to do that. However, they're not looking into these apps and seeing, like, the potential risks associated with that. I'm a music engine. Awkward. Have you ever seen a Jose Monkey video? No. This is a guy, I, I follow him on uh, TikTok. He will take, like you can send in a picture and um like uh jose monkey find me and he will like he does it to demonstrate how oh, easy it is for people yeah, to find yeah. you on yeah. the internet and he will track down like from picture or video and he will nail down exactly where you're at it's crazy yep I mean, that's my whole perspective on everything with all the iPhones and Android phones and all that stuff. Like, there's so much information that you don't know about that's being tracked. And there are so many people out there that can just 
very easily get that information. Look, it's out there. It's public. And sometimes, depending on what you do, like it's not as easy as a Google search. But these apps have all of that information. And they can track you down. And follow you. Depending on the permissions that you give. So for tomorrow, um, so they they pushed her back for another hour. So if I stream, it'll be like between five and eight thirty. Mm. All right, I probably won't be around for that. No. It's a. Uh, it like I, I originally yeah. wasn't planning on streaming because she was literally only supposed to work from right. uh, six to nine, nine fifteen. It's such a weird fucking schedule, and they've gotten her coming in now uh, at four thirty. So, I mean that that get open it up for me to do like a three hour live stream easily. But I, I don't really think anyone else is going to show up so if I do I'd have to do something I can do on my own yeah probably going to have to be because I'm probably going to be stuck at the dealership until at least 6 o'clock again yep How? got to do all the financing stuff you don't just do that all in one day? Uh, you can, but with our work schedules, like, we can only get down there for, like, 6 o'clock. And oh, they then close. there's like, an hour. Yeah, there's only an hour. Okay, makes sense. Oh. Yep. So, got to go down and do, like, all of the formal paperwork and all that nonsense and at least it means like Monday like she'll be able to get down there and like literally show up and grab the car and leave so yep It'll be a big day Saturday so <laughs> you sound so excited yeah, yeah, totally pumped. Great financial choice. <laughs> you still on that from last night? <laughs> oh, yeah. That won't change. It's going to be lifelong resentment. <laughs> I want you to know, I, this, this, as soon as I got off here, I went upstairs, I was talking to my wife about it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm sure. I'm, I am figured as much. I was just I was like, like, I wonder what he's going to say to his wife about this. I was like, I was like, here's my main concern. PJ used the phrase, it has great potential when talking about this house. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was like, knowing PJ's, 
Great potential means this was a shack sack of shit, and two weeks down the road, he's going to be like, oh, man, I'm so glad we didn't get that place. Oh, no. No, quite the opposite. No, no, no. I, I hold my ground to that. Dude, equity is hard to come by these days because people overpay for houses all the time. And they overbid to the point where, like, you buy a house for, like, $900,000, and it's only worth, like... Five fifty, and then you gotta sit on that house for like thirty years before you can sell it and make a profit. This house was selling below the tax assessed value. Like it was assessed by taxes, and by the way, the same tax people that do your excise tax on your car were like I paid $84 this year for my Tacoma because they said it was worth like four grand. It's like, okay. It's not. And they assessed it at like 634. And it was going for 579. So like and the houses on either side were going for over 800,000. So like, what? I mean, there's something wrong yeah. with it. Yep. But you could also spend $150,000 to figure out what the problem is. And if you bought the house for six fifty, and you decided that you didn't want to do any of the work, you could sell it for six fifty Because it was that undervalued. So, it, listen... There's certain things that I understand about the numbers and stuff that you just you can't explain to someone else that doesn't understand it. And I thought you were going to be talking to your wife about the car decision instead of the house decision, but oh no, I I, told, I, I, I gave her full a full update. I told her everything, I, but I, like my main sticker is like, PJ's is like, like really on about this house. But he, what concerns me is he used the phrase "has great potential," and I was like, I just remember the previous houses that he's used the same phrase, and it, it, the problems he lists about being with these places. Yeah, but I never told you what they went for. <laughs> That's the. You told me they've all gone for over what they're worth. Because they're worth more than the what selling price was. Yeah, because they're worth more than that. That's the issue. And I sit here looking at a car, being like, "Well, this is not. This is never going to appreciate in value. Like, it's never going to get better. It's only going to go downhill. So it's not a good investment. Like real estate." Is the best investment that you can make. No, oh, there's, there, there's no argument for me on that. That's... If the property is like has the potential of being valuable, you put the money in to do it. And... Yeah, but anyways. Yeah, so to most people, I just seem like a crazy person. Or I'm just like, yeah, just look at it. Just look at it. It could be something. It could be something. And everyone else is like, why are you going to live in a dump? <laughs> oh. Yeah, but how, when, when you when you go to do get a fixer yeah. upper, like how much, or how quick, because... That's the thing. I see you well, well, with, thing that we look with video at. games when yeah. things get rough. You get you get really you just you want to be done with it. Can you imagine a yeah, house? I'm only invested. Not only dude, do you I'm only invested in that you. game for like ten bucks. Like I'm invested in these houses for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like True. yeah, I'm gonna see it through. Like I have much more at stake. And also. You know, what my wife doesn't understand is, like, it doesn't, if you buy a house that has, like, a functioning bathroom 
and bedroom and stuff like this stuff can be done over time. It doesn't have to be right off. You're you're the married. Bat. You're married now, bro. You gotta stop thinking like a single man. Up, it doesn't have like, to be done immediately. Like you can do it in like three years. That's not that's not a woman's woman's view, man. If in in their view, it, 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 they're putting out that kind of money. Like it's gotta be like move in ready. Yeah, it's gotta be like turnkey. It's gotta be yes, somewhat. They don't understand condition. the. They don't understand. Don't not they? I'm not gonna generalize, but like <laughs> the equity of the house. Like you put a hundred thousand dollars in to repairs and renovations and stuff, but then the value of the house ends up being over two hundred thousand more. And so I sit there and look at them, and I'm just like, how do you not understand that? Yeah, but how do you not understand that they don't want to put in that, that work? And you probably will get disinterested because you you said so. You, like you have to make time to get to a dealership, let alone fix a house. Yeah, because one has value, one doesn't. Like pretty straightforward for me. I'd rather invest that in something that will give me a return for my money. It's called ROI. It's return on investment. And with the property prices, look, they're not going down anytime soon. Well, look at the return on the investment of the car. It gets her back and forth to work every day. That's, a, that's not a, a return. Investment. Yeah, well, it's uh You could also spend $20,000 or less and get the same thing. Yeah, but then you have to factor in the price of, of you know, higher mileage vehicle it requires more maintenance. Things could go wrong. Things break. It would still be cheaper, and by the time that she has to pay for anything significant, it would be time for her to get a new car. Here. I feel like you're, you're, not you're, going making to win. This, you're making this whole situation miserable when it doesn't have to be. <laughs> nope. I'm just looking at it from a dollar's perspective. That's all. And I was told by my dad that I'm like him, which is terrible to hear. And he's like, you have no empathy. I was like, <laughs> that's a, that's an astute observation. <laughs> it's like, I don't. I don't, I don't care about anything else except for dollars and cents. If it doesn't make sense from that perspective, I don't even want to hear it. So, obviously, this decision is crushing me. But we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Mary life, man. Yeah, well, she knows that I'm mad. And she also doesn't even need to ask why. <laughs> I feel like you've made it completely obvious that she doesn't have to ask why. Mm hmm. Well, you know, my logic is well, you did it anyways, so. Like my bargaining chips can be like, all right, well, you did that with the car. I'm, I'm picking the house. <laughs> That'd be a quick way to get her to change her yeah. mind, because mm -hmm. then you show up to like 
a three bedroom single wide trailer like it's got great potential <laughs> like we do have a trailer park down the street and you know <laughs> some quick equity right there think about it we live in it temporarily while we find the house we really want and then we rent this out for Airbnb yeah yeah there's so much to do in our area Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me for tonight. If you guys haven't yet already, be sure to hit that like button. It does help me out so very, very much. And I do appreciate it so very, very much. If you guys do want to see future Farming Simulator, Farming Fridays, be sure to click that subscribe button. If you guys want to be notified whenever I do go live or upload a video, click that notification bell. As always, guys, thank you so very, very much for watching. And I will see you guys maybe tomorrow night. If not, uh, maybe next week. If not, maybe next Saturday. We'll see. Anyway, have a good night.